Have you got the gift of the gab? For centuries, speeches have been one of the most common methods of influencing public opinion. Depending on their purpose, they can be classified in three categories – informative, persuasive and ceremonial – and each differs in both content and delivery. Informative speeches aim at presenting useful or important information on a specific topic – at a conference, for example. They contain a lot of in-depth descriptions and are delivered using more neutral, matter-of-fact language. On the other hand, a persuasive speech intends to convince the listeners of something. A typical example would be during a political campaign, whereby a politician uses emotive rhetorical statements to persuade people to believe in his or her abilities. Finally, ceremonial speeches are given on special occasions, such as weddings. They are typically light-hearted and often use humour and anecdotes in order to entertain the audience and celebrate a person or achievement. To understand what makes a successful speech, it is important to look at the commonalities between them. Firstly, they have a particular audience in mind. To appeal to a group of people, one must convey a message in a way that resonates with them and encourages them to adopt the receptive mentality. Secondly, an effective speech follows a logical progression from one point to the next. If an audience cannot understand how a speaker arrived at their conclusion, they will be unlikely to draw that same conclusion. Lastly, a convincing speech that is delivered with confidence by using deliberate movements, careful word choice and strong open posture is likely to instill belief in the listeners. In order for an audience to accept an idea, they must first see that the speaker stands firmly behind it. Any good speech includes three main parts. An introduction to inform the audience of the purpose of the speech and prepare them for what will follow. The main body, which includes the core of the speech. And the conclusion that wraps up all the points in a short but meaningful summary. A great number of speakers spend most of their time researching, drafting and redrafting the main points of their speech, overlooking the value of a powerful opening and an equally strong closing. The first grabs the audience's attention so they want to hear more, and the latter leaves them with something to reflect on. So, they should be dramatic, memorable and always related to the theme of the speech. A combination of well-organised quality content and poise is the key to a successful speech. After all, it's not what you say, it's how you say it.